I'm Manu Hasunigan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook at Manu Hasunigan. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. And in this video, we're going to talk about electron configuration, as well as orbitals that was discussed in the previous video. So electron configuration and orbitals. So what is electron configuration? Well, electron configuration of an atom is a particular distribution of electrons um, among available subshells, and therefore orbitals. And to understand this, we have to recap for what we learned about orbitals in the previous video. So we have four quantum numbers of an electron, remember? One of them is the principal quantum number, n, which is the energy level of the electron. Usually goes up in one digit, so one, two, three, four, five. And then we have the azimuthal quantum number, uh, abbreviated L, and this is and this defines the shape of the orbitals the electron occupies, and this can be s, p, d, or f. And then we have the magnetic quantum number m with a small l, and this tells us the different orientations um, the subshells can have, so the different types of orbitals we can have. And this is usually s, and then the three types of p orbitals, and then the five types of d orbitals, and then etc. with f. And then we also have the spin quantum number, ms, which tells us the spin of an electron. And this is usually, an electron usually has a spin up or it has a spin down. Now we're concentrating on the azimuthal quantum number, which tells us the subshells. And, but subshells, L, remember, has many orientations in space. And so this gives rise to different uh, number of orbitals. And so just recapping in this small table, so we have the different types of subshell. We have subshell S, which means L equals 0, subshell P, which means L equals 1, subshell D, which means L equals 2, subshell F, which means L equals 3. And then we have the number of orientations each of these can have, giving rise to many types of orbitals. So for S subshell, there is one type of orbital. P, there's three types of P orbitals. D, there's five types of D orbitals. F, there's seven types of uh, F orbitals. And so each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, which means for S, it can hold a maximum of two. For P, it can hold a maximum of six, because it's two electrons in each of these three different types of P orbitals. And then you can have a maximum of ten electrons in the D orbitals, because you have five different orientations, two in each, this means ten maximum electrons. And finally, for the F orbital, because there are fourteen, uh, because there are seven types, this means that 7 times 2 for 2 electrons in each of the 7 means that 14 electrons maximum can fit in the f orbitals. So an important point to remember is that two maximum of 2 electrons can fit in each orbital. And so now, if we take all this information from this spot and we just crunch it up and put it into our head, we can learn about electron configuration and, and understand electron configuration, in fact. And from this, we can construct how many types of uh, orbitals there are. So for example, here we have the shells, the energy level um, of an electron, and then up here we have the subshells, the different orbitals um, the electron occupies. So for example, here is the 1s, and then the 2s with the second energy level, 2p, and the third energy level with the 3s, 3p, and 3d subshells, and then we have the fourth energy level with the 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f subshells. And then we have the fifth energy level with the 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, and then 6s, 6p, 6d, 6f. Also notice that we don't even pass the, um, the f orbitals. and It just doesn't really pass it. Now next thing to uh, note is Aufbau's principle, I hope I pronounced this right, which states that we can obtain an electron configuration by filling in the subshells in a specific order. So there's actually a specific order uh, where the er electrons fill a particular atom. And this order, specific order, tends to be usually uh, starting from the lowest energy state to the highest energy state. But this is not 100% true, which I'll show you soon show you why. So the specific order, it goes 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, and then 3d, and then 4p, and then 5s, etc. So you might have noticed that it does have from the lowest energy state to the highest energy state, kinda, except there's some uh, strange numbers in between. Also notice that there's only one circle for each s subshell, for each s orbital, 
and, and this is because it's only one type. But for the p orbitals, such as 2p or 3p, there's three types of p orbitals, that's why there's three circles. And for the d orbitals, such as 3d, there's five types of d orbitals, so five circles. And another thing to remember is that each of these orbitals, each of these circles, can hold a maximum of two electrons. So now going back to this uneven order where the 4s, the filling in uh, goes 4s before 3d. Well, why is this? We have to actually look at a peri periodic table to understand why this occurs. But for now, it's important to know that the corresponding s orbital of the next energy level is filled before the d orbital of the, the, the current level. So essentially what it means is that 4s would be filled before 3d, and that 5s is filled before 4d, and that 6s is filled before 5d, etc. And this also, this also the same implies with the f orbitals, but the f orbitals is a bit more different. But we want to talk about f orbitals as well because that's just we don't need to talk about that. And this might be a bit confusing in memorizing the or the specific order in filling in each orbital. However, there is a mnemonic diagram for building up the order and helps us remember, known as a diagonal rule. So if you actually uh, draw up from the lowest energy level to the highest energy level, the the different the different orbitals and the subshells and different orbitals it has. Same, similar to the diagram on the very left hand side, we have 1s, 2s, 2p, then the three, third energy level, 3s, 3p, 3d, fourth energy level, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, and then the sixth energy level, etc. And so the diagonal rule is basically when you, when you draw diagonal lines running across each of these subshells. And this, and this tells us how the electrons are filled within each of these orbitals. So for example, you know, we, uh, going down, we fill this one first, then this one, then this one, then this one. And so as you can see here, we pass 4s before we pass 3d, which tells us that we fill in 4s before we fill in uh, 3d. Similarly, similarly, over here, we fill in fs before we fill in 4d here. Hope this makes sense. So now we can finally find the electron configuration of a particular atom how the, 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 diff, the specific distribution of electrons in each of the orbitals. So let's just draw a short one for starters. So here we have the 1s orbital followed by the 2s and then the 2p orbitals. Let's look at the atom, helium, which is, which is number 2 in the periodic table. And therefore z is the number 2. And this also tells us the number of electrons, which is 2 electrons. So two rules we have to remember is that each orbital each circle here can hold a maximum of two electrons and the two electrons in each of these orbitals have one a spin up and then the other a spin down property known as a spin quantum number if you remember and so let's draw two electrons so one two that's easy as that so for helium let's draw two electrons so two fills in the first orbital one spin up one spin down so therefore helium electrons configuration is 1s2 where 1s is the orbital and 2 implies how many electrons occupies it and so next, let's look at the periodic table and let's pick another um, element such as lithium here. So let's draw the specific order of orbitals first before filling it in. So lithium is number three, which means that its Z is three, which means three electrons. So let's fill in each of these orbitals with three electrons. So one spin up, one spin down here, and then one spin up here. This means that lithium's electron configuration is 1s2 and then 2s1. Or we can even write this as the element helium 2s1. Why do we do this? Well, this is because lithium actually comes right after helium, and helium is number eight in the, the in group eight of the pure periodic table. And we can write it like this for simplicity. So again, it's an easier way of writing electron configuration using the previous group eight element followed by the remaining orbitals in that specific period. Now let's look at another element and look at its electron configuration. So here we have nitrogen, which is number seven, which means that Z is seven, right? And so seven electrons. So let's fill in a, these electrons in each of these orbitals in the specific order. So two electrons occupy one S, two, two S, and then the remaining three fills in the two P orbitals like so. So nitrogen's electron configuration is just simply one S, two, two S to the power of two, two P to the power of three, because two P only holds three electrons. Or we can write this as helium followed by 2s, 2s2, and 2p3. And why do you write this again? Because helium 
is the previous group 8 element. And then we just write the remaining orbitals for nitrogen. And now if you remember me mentioning how the periodic table can help us in determining the electron configuration and the specific order, well it can. So first of all I'd like to show you a plain periodic table. What we have first have to do is move helium here, even though it is group 8 element. And so this area is the s orbital, consisting of the energy levels from the top, 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, 7s, and then we have over this area the p orbitals, starting from the 2p, 3p, 4p, 5p, 6p, 7p. And this area is the d orbital, starting from the top, 3d, 4d, 5d, 6d. And then the remaining down the bottom here, the langethanides, etc., is the f orbital, the 4f and 5f. Now you might have noticed that each of them start in different numbers, but nonetheless they tell us the energy levels of each of these orbitals. And so we actually fill uh, these orbitals up from left to right. So a more, much more easier diagram is this one here. So we fill it in from left to right. So 1s, then 1s, and then we fill in this 2s, and then the 2p, 3s, and then 3p, 4s, and then 3d, and then 4p, etc. I hope you understand. And then from this, we can actually, and you might have realized that this is actually exactly the same order as a diagonal rule. So let's look at an example. Let's look at nitrogen, which is situated here. This would mean that if we did the electron configuration backwards, we can write 2p3, and then we write uh, back to the left, which is 2s2, and then 1s2. That's nitrogen's electron configuration, which is what we got, 1s2, 2s2, and 2p3. Let's look at another element. Let's look at an element in this periodic table, which looks a bit messy, but it's situated here. Sodium, number 11, So, which means that sodium is situated here. So what's the electron configuration? Working backwards, 3s1, then we have previously 2p6, and then to the left, 2s2, uh, and then we have 1s2. And that's working backwards, remember. Working f I think working forwards is much more easier and following the diagonal rule. Anyway, we can check this by drawing up the specific order again, 1s, 2s, 2p, and then 3s. Sodium has 11, Z is 11, which means 11 electrons. We fill this uh, orbitals up like so, and we get exactly the same. Answer, which is sodium's electron configuration, is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. Or we can even write it as uh, neon. Ne because it's the previous group eight neon three s one. Hope that makes sense. Now let's look at a more difficult one. Let's just draw a long uh, order of orbitals. So we have one s one, two s, etc. This is the specific order where we fill it in. And let's look at an element gallium. Gallium here is number thirty one in the periodic table. So let's so gallium thirty one, which means that is thirty one. So therefore thirty one electrons. So the electron configuration of gallium. Of course, we have to fill it in first to understand. So 31 electrons, like so. So gallium's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2, and 4p1. And have you noticed how the configuration is written from the lowest to highest energy level? So we actually don't write the electron configuration in the order of filling. We actually write it in the energy levels electron configuration. And of course we can write the electron configuration of gallium as argon, which is the previous group 8, followed by 3d10, 4s2, and 4p1. Of course we can figure out the electron configuration of gallium by looking at the periodic table. So if gallium is situated here, if we work backwards, first of all we have 4p1, because that's where gallium is in the p orbital, 4p1, and then we have the 3d, which occupies all 10, and then we have the 4s2, the 4s has to come after the 3d10. And then because argon over here is the group 8, um, and gallium follows argon, therefore we can just write argon here for simplicity. And so if we check this, argon 3d10, 4s2, and 4p1, that is correct. Uh, finally, we learned about Aufbau's law, about the specific order in filling in each orbital. Another important rule is called the Hans rule, which states that the lowest energy arrangement of electrons in a subshell is sustained by putting electrons into separate orbitals of the subshell with the same spin before pairing electrons. Now that might look, sound pretty confusing, but essentially what it means is that we have to 
uh, put the electrons in each uh, subshell having the same spin first. So what do we mean by this? So for example, let's look at iron with uh, atomic number 26, which means that 26 electrons. So let's fill in these electrons. So in the 1s orbital, we have one electron spin up and then one electron spin down. In the second orbital, it's 2s orbital, we have one electron spin up, one electron spin down. 2p orbital, we have three spin up, three spin down. 2, 3s orbital, we have two electrons, one spin up, one spin down. 3p orbital, we have three spin up and three spin down in each. In the 4s orbital, we have one spin down and one spin up. And then in 3d orbital, we want to write it up, fill it in with the orbitals all having the same spin first. So as follows. All of them have spin up first, and then there's one, we, the last electron, we have the last one being spin down. And so as you can see, we have the same spin in each orbital before we have the different spin. And this is basically giving us the lowest energy arrangement. So what would be the electron configuration of iron? It would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, then 4s2. Or we can write it as argon, because it's a previous group 8 element, followed by 3d6, and then 4s2. Hope that made sense. Hope you enjoyed the electron configuration. Next, we'll look at valence electrons. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share. Thank you.